Hi, Ted Wald here. Welcome back to my channel. Okay, in this video, we talk about the site editors, which is the tools you will need to build your website part by part. Because WordPress is an open source platform, so you can't really build a great website just with the default WordPress editors. You need other stuff like themes and plugins to help you do that. Just like the open source coding language Python. You can't really write a great program with just the default Python language. You need a lot of packages. Then here comes the problem. What side editors are out there and which of them are what you need? And the fact is, it's a little bit confusing, all right? It cost me days to finally figure it out. So to start with, we have the building editor of WordPress. And with that, you may come across two kinds of editors. The first is called the classic editor, and the other is called the block editor or Gutenberg editor. So what's the difference? Well, it turns out that the classic editor is WordPress's default editor before 2018, all right? Before WordPress version 5.0. And after that, the classic editor is replaced by the block editor. So if you are using WordPress right now, since it's 2022, you are stuck with the block editor. Right, just like I did. And if you go to the plugin market in WordPress, you can still find the classic editor as a separate plugin, which you can install and you can use it. Also, you'll find the Gutenberg editor, which is the blog editor built in with WordPress. A funny thing you'll notice is that the classic editor has 5 million active installations and it has a 5 star review, but the Gutenberg editor has only 0.3 million active installations and it only has a two star review. So why is that? From my experience, I think the block editor works just fine, okay? I think the reason for this is that a lot of people build their websites earlier when they are stuck with the classic editor and they find it easy to use. And later, when the block editor is introduced, it is a drastic change there. So people may have used to the classic editor, but I didn't use the classic editor. Maybe it's really better, but uh, that's, that's just one of my assumptions, okay? So about the default editor, you just ignore the classic editor, okay? Just use the block editor, you'll be fine, trust me. Okay, next level, on top of the classic editor, you got themes. First, what is the theme? Well, if you go to your dashboard, appearance, themes, and uh, click add new, you'll go to the same market, just like the plugin market, which you can get access to thousands of themes, all right? And most of them are free. In WordPress, you have to install a theme before you start editing your website. You have to, that's not a choice, all right? You could use the WordPress official ones like the 2022 or some 2020 like that. But I strongly suggest to you that you use a powerful theme. So why is that? Because the theme in WordPress is not like the say the theme on our Android smartphone. The difference between different themes are just different icons, different color, or different font. It's not like that, right? If you go to the theme file editor, you'll find that a theme is actually a lot of PHP, JavaScript, and the CSS files. It decides which part can you edit and which part you cannot. And within each part, how much can I edit this part? So for example, uh, right now I'm using a block theme. And as you can see, I can edit a lot of parts in my website, like the general, a lot of layout buttons. I can choose from a lot of this. And the header, footer, sidebar, colors, topography, and uh, the post types, the blog posts and pages style and a lot of core uh, stuff. If I use another theme, like a basic official WordPress theme, we use the official theme 2020. Now I have activated it. Then you go to the customize. You'll find that there are only these options, right? You can't really, you can't really edit your header, footer, sidebar, none of that. Right. There's really, really limited options, right? You can't really change that much stuff. All right, here comes another confusing thing about themes. If you uh, try out a lot of themes, you'll find that there are actually two kinds of themes. The first kind, 
like this one I'm using right now, which is uh, Bloxy. You'll find that within the appearance menu, you have all these functions. And most important is this customized one. If you click on it, you'll get to the page that you can customize every aspect of your website, okay? But if you use another kind of theme, which is called a block-based theme, like this one, Charter, when I activate it, then suddenly the appearance menu leaves only three options and uh, the customize menu is gone. Replaced is the editor, beta, this menu. And if you click on it, and here you'll find that if you click on this icon and you get this styles design tutorial. And uh, within here, this is based on every block you use. If you click on this block, you can customize these parts of this block. And if you click on this block, and you can customize this block. So this block-based theme replaces the overall setting within the customize menu and uh, replace it with individual blocks. Then which kind of theme is better among these two? Well, my answer is quite clear which is the normal themes, not the block-based themes. Why? First, most of the popular themes are the normal themes. And second, I tried out a lot of normal themes and the block-based themes. I tried out like 10 block-based themes and the only feature that the block-based theme has, but the normal theme doesn't have, is that it has this feature of make template part. But after I used it, I found out that you can just use the add to reusable blocks feature and I don't see the difference between these two options, okay? But the bug based themes has a lot of drawbacks and the major one which I can't really understand and can't stand is that font. For example, out of the 10 block based themes I tried, everyone has just two or three building font family, right? And a lot of them are, are strange fonts, that not web safe fonts, nobody use. And you can't install your own font to your theme. So I don't know why they design it like this. It's really a fatal problem, okay? So for these two themes, the conclusion is that you just ignore the block-based themes just to use the normal themes, all right? All right, on top of the themes, we have the site editor level three, which is the editor plugins, all right? If you go to plugins and uh, search for builder, you'll find some common plugins like Elementor Builder or SeedProd or Beaver, right? These plugins, they have their advantage, which is you can edit even more parts of your website and in even more depths. But there are also some drawbacks, okay? The first drawback is that it's a plugin and the plugins for WordPress is not the more the plugin, the better. It's not because plugins have an impact on the loading speed of your website, right? And these site builders are not small in size, which compared to themes are just uh, under 100 kilobytes. The second drawback is that you can't make these site editor plugins live with your building editor or themes, okay? If you use your themes and building editor to edit these five parts of your site and you use the site editor like uh, Elementor to edit other five parts of your website, the final result is not these 10 parts together, okay? It's either A or B. The viewer can only see one version of your website, right? For the same page, if you edit it with Elementor, then they see the page that edited with Elementor. If not, they see the page that edited with the default editor. That's it. And this leads to another drawback is that if you use this editor to edit your website, then they are stuck with you, okay? You can not just get rid of them at any time. Once you have designed your website with the editor, they are 
in your plugin forever. The next drawback is that some of these editors have bugs, right? After all, they are another software that's running on your WordPress. For example, I tried to use Elementor, but after I installed it, I spent a whole morning, like four hours, right? Trying to solve one problem, which is I can't get into the preview of my Elementor. And I have looked up all kinds of tutorials or solutions on Google and on the official page of Elementor. And tried all the tricks they offered me, none of them worked. And finally, I changed my browser from Safari to Chrome and it worked. But this solution is not written in the official troubleshooting guide. The last drawback is that to use the powerful features of these editors, you have to use the pro version, which is paid, right? If you are using the free version, it's not even powerful as the default editor, right? And for the paid version, for example, Elementor, you have to pay at least $49 a year, up to $999 a year, and you are stuck with that. So in conclusion, and my suggestion is that ignore these site editor plugins, okay? Because we are just building our website from scratch. And for a website, the content is much more important. And with a powerful theme, you can really tailor a lot of details of your website. And I think that's enough, right? The famous blogs like Tim Ferriss or Mark Manson's, they didn't use a site editor. So my suggestion is just ignore it, okay? So let's come to the final conclusion of the site editor tools will use. It's in the WordPress default block editor plus a powerful theme. That's it. And trust me, it's enough to build a powerful and beautiful website. Okay, in this video, we learned the different kinds of editors that you can use to build your website, which are the building editor themes and the plugins, and how to choose from them. Next, we'll get familiar with WordPress itself. There are a lot of juicy stuff coming. Be sure to subscribe.